We are backstage in this makeshift studio with Mo T. That was an amazing talk. I so inspiring. I don't even know where to start. I mean, let's let's go with Lighthouse. Yeah. That was like the most powerful ending to your talk. Thank you. Tell me more about it. The concept of the Lighthouse came about uh, when I realized that people were, were using content online, like my videos, as a reference point, and they were aiming towards it. And, and really, I realized that genuinely, like, the only reason that became a thing is because I let my light out. And when you, and I realized that every single person has a light out, but in the start of their life, they're just this secluded island that no one hears about. And for so much of us, we stay like that. We kind of hide it. If anything, we hide it even more. And we don't let the world know that this island exists. But actually, if we're able to overcome the, the if we're able to love ourselves, genuinely, that's what it comes down to. If we're able to love ourselves and understand our value, and rather than use those bricks to hide ourselves, stand on top of them, and use social media to put our light out into the world, then all those boats on the horizon begin to see that light and resonate with it, and begin to point their ships towards you. And that's how you genuinely build community and, 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 and add value to the world. I am just seeing a connection because I have filmed with Moti, the videos are coming out on Thursday. We're going to collab on it. We were looking at lights on the Heathrow runway. Yeah. This is all about light. It's this all is all about, about being enlightening. Mm. Your journey is so inspiring for that reason because you're clearly extremely passionate about engineering and now you've made this bold step into media. Yeah. <laughs> Following in your footsteps. <laughs> well, this event is Reflect 2023. Tell me how you're reflecting on that right now. Where are you with it? So I, I know it's a necessary step. I see the world changing. And I think, so here's, here's, here's how engineering works. Engineering is understanding a problem and then using the tools that you have to solve the problem. And the problem that I was learning about when in uni was like technical problems. But then when you step into the world of work, you realize that not all problems are technical problems and not all problems need technical answers. So one of the biggest problems I had is people misunderstand engineering. People don't actually know what happens in the world of engineering. So then I thought to myself, what skills can I use to solve that problem? Social media, video, actually, you know, it just so happens that I love that stuff and I'm really good at it. So it's like the icky guy came to place, right? What are you good at? What do you enjoy? What do you love? And then how do you find that bit in the middle that clicks to all these things? So I made the bold move to jump into the social media team because I wanted to understand how a social media team is run on the inside because that's, you know, you can't make changes just from working on the outside. You kind of need to go on the inside and see what it's like. Get under the bonnet. Get under the bonnet, start speaking their language, start speaking their lingo because otherwise I'll just be that engineer that does this stuff part time. But actually the real problem that, I, that I've identified in the world is people misunderstand engineering, specifically engineering with aviation. And I recognize that I might have the skill set to change that. So therefore there was no, there was no alternative thing that I could have done than just say, actually, you know what, let's go all in because you only live once, right? So let's just go all in. I mean, I have to say, Mo, you've really inspired me today because hearing what you said in your talk and seeing what you're doing makes me realize that I have always, um, I've always approached things with this kind of guilt mm. that I'm not representing engineering in this technical way mm. and that the fact that I love telling stories and I have done for so many years, yeah. but never really done what you're doing, which, which is to take a stand and just go, this is me, yeah. accept me yeah. for just following your heart. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, thank you for doing that because you are making it acceptable for everybody else to do the same. You're giving permission. Yeah, and that's and that's really, I, I owe that to people like who I've watched on the internet and like who I've seen develop do that as well. So one guy who stands out is a guy called Ali Abdal. He's a doctor who became full-time YouTuber. But you think, oh my God, you left, you left being a doctor to be a content creator about productivity. Why would you do that? He's like, oh, yo, listen, like, I just like, I discovered something about myself and I love doing that. Why can't I embrace that? Why do I have to hold on to who people think I am just for like credibility? Mm -hmm. And the analogy that I've sort of come up with that really explains that is you may have seen like on Instagram, there are these people who draw on iPads and then they zoom into a specific part of the drawing and then a whole nother drawing emerges 
and they zoom into that even more and a whole nother image emerges and another one emerges. I feel like life is a search within and you might think you know what that picture is, but I guarantee if you were to zoom into a part of you that really stands out and that you're curious about, you'll realize that there's a whole nother world in there. You don't have to hold on to that first picture. You can make that now who you are. And I think that journey of self-discovery, if we just hold on to who we think we were, it means that we can't let go on to see what more there is. With, when, with any writer that you might ask, um, their creative process sometimes, they get like a brain freeze, they don't know what's next. Writer's block. Writer's block. The best thing to do with writer's block is just to start a whole free, fresh new page, just go again. Like sometimes you'll write something and you kind of attach to it, you're like, ah, I like this, but it doesn't really fit right. Or even just, just start, leave it alone. Start, exactly. Walk away. Walk away. And, and the bravery to walk away, I think, is something that I would love to empower more people to do because you, you're not, you know, otherwise you're just hoarding careers. Like you're just hoarding parts of you rather than saying, hold on, let's see how much more of me there is to discover mm. and then be able to show that to the world and be like, yo, like, this is just what I've discovered about myself. I don't care what you think, but this is who I am. And then you give people to say, you give people the bravery to say, hold on, maybe I can do that for my own journey. And the beauty of that is you never know what niche they might go down in. But if we have more people discovering more niches, there's going to be the next generation that can see them as lighthouses and say, oh my God, there's somebody doing this and somebody doing that. And then we're just going to have more and more lighthouses and more and more people feeling like they can be themselves. And what's not to love about that? I just feel like I want to dwell on that for hours because mm. it's such a gem issue, global ethnic majority issue yeah. where, you know, I mean, I thought M in gem was yeah. minority. Mm. And even just that, changing minority to majority, is such a big deal. But Game everything changer. you're saying is about owning who you are. Yeah. You know, like really letting the cat out of the bag. As you, being you, how many of those kind of obstacles have you faced in letting yourself blossom? Yeah. I mean, I think it's like all of life is, is about that. Like you're always going to have this vision of who you think you are until you realize that you are wrong. Um, but that's the beauty of life. Like when I was younger, I put up this facade of like liking football and like being the goalkeeper. And I used to literally go home and study 11 players from Man United just in case someone might ask me. That's how little I cared about it. But I just used to make sure I was on check. But you start to literally divide your life into who you actually are versus who people think you are. And the further that gets removed, the more dangerous it is because the more empty you feel. Mm. But actually when you're able to just show people who you actually are, and then you realize, oh, hold on, why, why do we do that? Why do we create this distance? It's because we feel like people won't accept us for who we actually are. But what you realize is that the moment you genuinely show people who you actually are, those people who you thought won't accept you, true, it might not, they might not accept you. You might lose a few friends. But what you don't realize is that you might gain a whole other community of people who love you for who you are. So why live a fake life for people who like that, that shell when you can be authentic and draw in so many more people who you resonate with and you love and you work together like yourself, George, the people downstairs, like all of this community that I find, I find myself at home in is only because I thought to myself, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna be that fake person. Like let me just show my true nature and who knows what happens. But then you realize like people love that and people resonate with that and you form a whole new community that loves you and appreciates you for who you actually are. And, and that's within every single one of us. I bet when you made that switch, that's when you lost that one follower. Yeah. And then you gained like your half a million following. Yeah, probably. <laughs> um, I just love that so much. And your, your talk, we just don't have time to delve into it. But even though your talk was very strong, have you taken away anything from listening to other speakers? Go on, give me a big reflect up some in what you've heard so far. Wow, I mean, that's so hard <laughs> because, okay, so I was on first, Christina was on afterwards. What I loved about um, Christina's talk is how actually you only really begin to flourish when you start doing things that are outside your day job. 
right? Like her for her, it was like, I'd done my day job, I was kind of having a normal career. But then when I started to utilize the networks and the people and stuff like that, trajectory just goes on a, on a crazy incline, right? So it really showcases the proactivity that if you look, like look at yourself and I and think, oh, they're doing cool stuff. It's only gonna happen when you go outside of your general day-to-day -to, -day to go do extracurricular stuff. The other bit that we were talking about is then like the medical side and like the humanitarian side of engineering. And that's a whole new world for me. Like I really sometimes, I thought, I thought, wow, like part of my job is so shallow. Like I just, I kind of look after runways and stuff where people are actually looking after different, like changing lives. Like they're, they're I, I felt like I could do more. Like I felt like maybe I can't, I shouldn't just work in like this big organization providing a service, but actually think about what problem in the world I genuinely care about and then use my problem solving solutions to provide that and help the people that need it the most, not just the people who are already living in abundance. Because ultimately right now we, we are us engineers, a lot of us, um, we help the people who are already living in abundance, whether you're designing a supercar or motorsport, stuff like that. It's, By the way, you yeah. helped to get those washing machines somewhere. That is true. Part of the puzzle. That is all true, that is all true. But I, maybe I just felt like how wonderful it would be to be more closer, uh, closer to, the, to the problem. I think now this quote about fall in love with the problem because the solution will always change. I only actually clicked the today when I heard his speech because I, I heard him say it a couple of weeks ago but it never clicked. But now it's clicked because when he, when he shows the story of him literally in India, look, like watching this problem, you realize that what he means by that is you need to find the problem that really makes your heart go, yeah, this is, this is for me, like, I need to solve this problem. And that's when engineering comes into a whole new beautiful world of its own because now you approach this problem with purpose. You approach this problem with, like somebody's waiting for me to create something to give to them. And I can't just go back and twiddle my thumbs. I need to go and I need to create something. And your nav speech was amazing, but also Amma's because she, hers is so much more like granular, like she's, she's like, she, printing ears for people who don't have it or prosthetic limbs genuine problems that impact genuine people one thing i have really been reflecting on is how hold on engineering can be a lot closer to the problem and to be an engineer you can be a lot you can be fingers on the pulse with the problem and you don't have to be far removed and that, that, that inspires me to see what's next in my career as well. Well, I have to say, the things you said have profoundly changed me. Like, I think if I was to sum That's it so up, kind. I would be like, you know what? I'm gonna actually like let myself be my authentic self and not hold back because I've seen you do that. Is there anything like a one take home that you can think of right now? I'm sure there'll be many over the course of time, but that one thing? What I'll say is you don't know who's watching you and when you become your true self, what the domino effect that could have on somebody else. So the domino might have fallen here, but I've only been myself because I watched somebody else be themselves. So the dominoes are within each of us and the moment we allow our domino to be like, I'm gonna be myself you then knock so many more dominoes with so many more people. So remember that, remember that there's a little girl or boy somewhere looking at you. And when they see you being your true authentic self, something will click in them to be their authentic self. And then you create a ripple effect that withstands our own lives and genuinely creates a change in the world. Thanks Moti, also known as Moti Vape <laughs> on social media. For obvious reasons, it's been such a pleasure to meet you, talk to you, keep enjoying Reflect 2023 and thank you for sharing with us. Thank you, Dr. Shini, thank you. <laughs>